I started my lab here at Auburn, I knew I wanted to incorporate 3D scanning of the human body in some aspect. And I also wanted to translate that scan of human body to 3D printing. And I, and I thought about it in the context of orthotics and prosthetics. So it started with the equipment and with the intention, although somewhat uncertain of how to combine 3D scanning and 3D printing. Uh, shortly thereafter, I joined a group here at Auburn uh, that was funded internally specifically to advance 3D printed prosthetics and orthotics. That coincided with my neighbor, who's still my neighbor, uh, Robbie Stewart, who is the head athletic trainer at uh, the football team here at Auburn. And they had an injury of a wide receiver uh, where he had broken his hand and they wanted to know if we could make a custom brace for his hand. And with the technology we had, my short answer was yes. And next it was, let's figure out how to do it. We brought him in, we scanned him with the 3D scanner. We converted that. I had a, a graduate student of mine, Jake Larson, convert that scan to a model. So we took the surface of his hand, we offset it for the thickness of the padding they wanted to use, and then we gave it a thickness in and of itself. Then we, re we 3D printed that on the Pro 2 Plus, uh, and it came out great. And we ended up bolting it to a wrist guard, and they put the liner in there. And he was able, so low profile, was able to wear his, to slide a, a glove over top of it. Uh, and the first game he played in it was against Texas A&M and he ran a reverse for a 60 yard touchdown. And it was just like the most amazing thing in the world because the team doc from the sideline in College Station, Texas texted me uh, about it and it was super exciting. So that's, that's how it began. And then we did a shoulder guard for another wide receiver. Uh, the College of Engineering ran an article on it. West Virginia University found out about it. They contacted me, said, hey, can you do this remotely? And I said, well, if you're willing to work with us, we can figure out how to do it. And we ended up figuring out how to scan with a phone. And that's where it essentially became realized, uh, where, I, where I thought that this could actually turn into a business when I realized we could do it. And we did it for West Virginia. They scanned their wide receiver's shoulder. They emailed me the scan. We made a model. We 3D printed it in our Pro 2 Plus. Uh, we put it in UPS and overnighted it to him and he wore it against Kansas State the next Saturday. My initial choice of Raise 3D was purely based upon my research online for, for who was happy with what. And I knew I wanted it enclosed and I knew I, I didn't want to have to put it together when it came in and all of the reviews were good and I was extremely happy with it. We, when we were iterating through materials, we also iterated externally through different printers, different other types of printers even, not just fusion deposition, but other models and makes of fusion deposition as well. But we outsourced all those to, to print shops and we'd send them files and they'd print stuff and send it to us. Ultimately, we decided that we were consistently and reliably getting the best parts out of our Ray's 3D printer. And we decided that that was the way to go. So we have made guards for obviously football, baseball, soccer, basketball, hockey, and every time we have made these guards out of PLA uh, and in the same thickness. And so uh, these, the material properties have not changed from guard to guard, whether it was a thumb protector, whether it was a shoulder protector, or whether it was a, um, a you know, lower back guard or whatnot, it's all been the same. And we've really honed in on specifically these print settings with PLA because we get the best results. We can print extremely fast. Uh, we can print parts that are extremely reliable in terms of their accuracy because the biggest or a big component of this is making sure that the print comes out accurate so that it conforms to the body perfectly. That's the entire idea. So if the print deforms as it's printing, that doesn't work for us. But the last thing and, and maybe most importantly is, is that it comes out extremely strong. And that's where we feel like a lot of our IP sits is in the parameters and the print settings that we have settled upon after 18 months in the lab to make parts that are, you can stand on and it won't break. It's extremely just mind blowingly strong what we've been able to do. I would say that it's gonna be somewhere in between where you'll have gear that functions and looks similar to let's say modern day standard sized gear. Yet how it interfaces with the body is perfectly customized using 3D printing technology. Some gear, yes, absolutely replace. I think about thigh pads, maybe knee pads, the pads you slip down in pants for football. 
um, hip pads, uh, that sort of thing. I could see that being completely replaced with perfectly customized devices. Shoulder pads are gonna be a little bit different because what you want is you want that interface with the shoulder to fit well, uh, but then you still want some relative movement between the, the different components of the shoulder pad with what's interfacing with the body. So I could see a combination there, um, but generally speaking, yeah, I think ultimately the majority of pads and athletic gear will be customized. The trick is, is how can you do it in such a way that it's financially feasible? And we feel like we are well on the path to that with our app, with our print settings able to print so quickly and with our corresponding software that can extremely, uh, extremely short period of time convert a scan to a 3D printable model uh, to send to the printer. We see multiple avenues of automation in this process that don't currently exist, uh, but given enough time and resources, we can get there. But generally speaking, the benefit is, is if you have what I would consider near close to 100% contact area, then in the case of an orthotic where you want to constrain a joint, let's say, then you've got maximum hold due to maximum contact. In the case of, let's say a shin guard or a shoulder guard worn under shoulder pads, increased contact area means, means better distribution of the energy in the load that is applied to the body upon contact. So, and that's what you want because you don't want what are called stress concentrations. That's why you can lay down on a bed of nails, but you can't lay down on a single nail. That's because the contact area, the surface area, the contact area has increased and the same force has been distributed out amongst more area. That's what we're achieving here. So with a standard shin guard where you might see 60, 65% contact area, with ours, you see 100%. So we're reducing stress concentrations, dissipating the load, the energy, uh, which reduces the chance of injury. And in the case of orthotics, increased contact area maximizes the ability of that particular device to constrain that particular body part. And that's something that we want, we discuss a lot, which is the preventive aspect of these devices. It's not all in response to injury. Uh, it can be difficult to convince some athletes that they need to wear extra padding uh, before they're injured, but we feel like it could really do a lot, especially if you think about a position like running back in football. If you wear our shoulder guards underneath your shoulder pads and it increases your number of carries by 30% before you have an AC joint sprain by game eight, instead you make it the entire season, your productivity is going to be that much greater. So we feel like there's a huge potential for preventive use of these sorts of things. Right now, our focus is primarily on collegiate athletic departments and providing the offering, either one of the two that I mentioned before, where one subscription model involves placing a printer in their facility. And then the second involves uh, providing them with some maximum number of prints per week, let's say, depending on the particular subscription model. So that's our current focus is at collegiate athletics. We've got some inroads into professional sports, including the NFL and we plan to expand to there as well. We are in discussions with various medical clinics, uh, OMP clinics. Um, so uh, we're, we're looking at all of it right now, but our primary focus is collegiate athletics.